Hello and welcome to this Excel tips video. I am Sumit Bansal and in this video I am going to show you how to make a dynamic monthly calendar in Excel. So here I have this calendar already made. So let me first show you how the final result would look like and then I will show you the exact steps to make this calendar. So here I have the year in cell B1 and the month in cell B2 and when I make these changes you will see that this calendar is going to automatically update. So as of now this is the calendar for January 2022 but when I change the month here to Feb 2022 you can see that this title here changes and at the same time the calendar updates so that now you see the dates for February 2022. At the same time you see this highlighted cell which is a holiday in February. So I have a separate sheet here where I have specified holidays and you can use this to specify any important dates, birthdays, anniversaries, uh, any important uh, project deliverables and those would also get highlighted in the calendar. And if you make the change in the year, then this calendar would update for any year and for any month. So let me go back to January 2022. So let me now show you the exact steps you can use to make this calendar. So this is the sheet where I'm going to build that dynamic monthly calendar and there is a little bit of formatting that I've already done. So let me quickly explain what I've done here. I have entered year and month text in cell A1 and A2 and I'm going to enter the year value in cell B1 and I'm going to create a drop down that will show you the month names in cell B2. Here I have created this grid where I have these day names and I have these six rows. So this is the grid where I'm going to get the dates for the selected month. So the first thing I'm going to do is enter the year number here, which is 2022. You can enter any number and this calendar is going to update for any year, any month. And now I'm going to create a drop down that will show me the month names. To do that, I already have another sheet that has the month names here and I'm going to use this to create a drop down here. So I'm going to go to the data tab here and in data validation icon. So I click on this data validation icon and in this data validation dialog box, Within settings tab, I'm going to click on this allow dropdown and select list. And here I'm going to select the source for the dropdown. So the source would be this list in month names sheet. And now when I've selected it and I click OK, you'll see that a dropdown has been created where I see all these month names. So I can select January here. So January would appear. Let me center align these. Now, what I've done is I have selected the year and I've selected the month and now I want this calendar to automatically update. Now before that, uh, I need the title for this calendar. So what I'm going to do is simply use a concatenate formula to combine these two so that whenever you change the month name, the title of the calendar would automatically change. So I would have equal to sign B2, which has the month name, then ampersand and then uh, space in double quotes because I want the month name and the year to have space in between and then ampersand and then the year value. And now when I hit enter, it gives me January 2022 here. Now I can change the formatting a little bit. So maybe make it blue in color, maybe increase the size a little bit and maybe make it bold. So I have the title here and I can also center align it. So I would select this entire range where I want this to be center aligned. And then I would go to this dialog box launcher in the alignment option in the home tab. And when I do that, it opens this format cells dialog box. And here within the alignment group, I would click on center across selection. And now when I click OK, it is centered in this grid so that I have this title of the calendar. And when you change these month names, you would see that the title of the calendar would automatically change. Now, before I show you the formula that I'm going to use to get all the dates for the selected month, there are two things I want to show. So I'm going to simplify the formula, try to break it down for you so that it will be easier for you to follow. So there are two things that I would need for that formula to work. The first one would be the month number. So here it says January, but I don't need January. I need the month number, which would be one for January, two for February and so on. So let me type the text here. Month number. And remove the formatting. And here, what I'm going to use is a simple match formula where I pick up this text as the lookup value. Then I go back to the month name sheets and select this entire range as the lookup array. And then I would say, I need an exact match. Now what this does is when I use this formula, it is going to pick up this text and then scan this list here and give me the position of the selected month here. So if it is January, it would be in the first position. So it would return one for February, it would return two for March, it would return three and so on. So I would come back here. Let me format it. Let me also give this a border. 
And the second thing I need is to know what would be the first day of the selected month. So in this case, I need to know what day would be the first day of January 2022. So if I open my calendar here and I go to January, I see that Saturday is the first day. So somehow I need to figure out that Saturday is going to be the first day in January 2022. Or if I go to February, then I need to know that Tuesday is going to be the first day in February 2022. So to do that, I'm going to use again a very simple formula. So here, day for the first day of the month. And here I'm going to use the week day formula. Now weekday formula would take a date and then it would return the weekday number. So it would return whether it's a Monday or a Tuesday. So it would return a number that would correspond to that day. So in this case, I need a serial number, which should be a date. So in this case, I'm going to construct the date, which is using the date formula. The year would be this one selected from cell B1. The month number, which would be here in cell N4, which we already calculated. And then the day would be one. So this date here would give me the first day of the selected month. So I can change the month and year value here and it would always give me the first date in that month. And then I need to specify the return type. Now in return type, if you do not specify anything, it would give you a number where the number would mean one would be Sunday, two would be Monday, three would be Wednesday and so on. But I want my week to start from Monday. So I'm going to select two. So when it gives me a number, I would know that if it's a one, then it is Monday. If it's two, then it's Tuesday and so on. Now, when I hit enter, it gives me six, which means that this month, January 2022 is going to start from Saturday. Similarly, if I come here and I select February, then it gives me two, which means that February 2022 is going to start from a Tuesday. And I can check that this is right. February starts on a Tuesday. Let me also format these so that these look a little more consistent. Now that I have these two values, let me show you the formula that I'm going to use in this grid so that it gives me the dates for the specified month. So the formula that I'm going to use will have the sequence function. Now sequence is a new function in Microsoft 365 and it gives me a sequence of numbers starting from one. Now, if you're using an older version of Excel, don't worry. I will have a formula in the description of this video that you can use if you do not have access to the sequence function. Now, coming back to this formula, I want this sequence function to fill this grid with a sequence of numbers starting from one. So I'm going to specify the row number, the total number of rows and the total number of columns that I need to fill. And this function would do that. So here the total number of rows would be six because I have six empty rows that I need to fill. And the column number would be seven because there are seven empty columns. And now when I hit enter, it would fill this grid with a sequence of numbers starting from one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here until 42. I have this grid filled with a sequence of numbers. Now. I don't need these numbers. Instead, I need the date. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and I would add the date, the first date of the month to the sequence function. So I would use the date function. The year would be this value here in cell B2. The month number is here. So this is why we calculated this month number. And the day would be one because I want the first day of the month. So this date function here would give me the first date of the selected month. So now when I hit enter, it gives me these numbers. Now you see these as numbers, but you can also convert these into dates. So these are actually the dates in February 2022. But because the cells are not formatted in the date format, you see these numbers because in Excel, dates are stored as numbers in the backend in Excel. So if I want to show these numbers as dates, I would select this entire grid, go to the home tab and here in this drop down, in this format drop down, I'm going to select short date. And when I do that, all these numbers are converted to date. Now you see these hashes because the column width is not wide enough. So let me increase the column width. And now you can see these dates. Now this is not the right values. As of now, I'm getting uh, Monday as 2nd February, which is incorrect. I know that in February 2022, the month starts from Tuesday. So if I go back to the calendar here, you can see in February, the month starts from a Tuesday. So I'm going to adjust this formula, but you see that I have the basic framework in place. Now I'm going to adjust this formula and I'm going to subtract the weekday value. Let me decrease the width so that you can see the value here. So what I'm going to do is in this formula, I'm going to subtract this weekday value and now when I hit enter, 
this gives me the right dates. So I have the calendar right here. The calendar is correct. Uh, as of now, if you come here and you select January, you will see that it gives me the right dates. January starts from Saturday. The first day from, of January 2022 was on a Saturday. So this calendar is right. As of now, you already have a dynamic calendar, but this is not the final result I want. There are two more things I want to do. The first is I don't want these dates, which are of the previous month or dates that are of the next month to appear. So as of now, this calendar where I've selected January 2022 also shows me the dates for December 2021 and February 2022. But I don't want this. I want these to be blank so I can do that easily using a formula. And the second thing is I want to highlight those dates that are on a holiday. So I have a separate sheet here where I have all the holidays and I want these holidays to get highlighted in the calendar. So if in January there is a holiday, it should be highlighted. So let me do the first thing. I need to use a formula to make sure that dates which are before the selected month or after the selected month don't show up. So here I'm going to adjust the formula. Let me select this entire part here. And now I'm going to use a simple if condition where I would check whether the month number of the given date is equal to the month number of the selected month, which is here in cell N2. So I'm going to use the month function and I would check whether this is equal to the value here or not. And if this is equal to that value, then I want that date. So I would simply have the entire date plus sequence minus weekday value. Else I would just have a blank. And now when I hit enter, it would remove all the dates except the dates for the selected month. So here all the dates are gone except for January. Similarly, if I come here and I select February, then you can see it is the right calendar. It only shows me the date for February and all the other dates are gone. The other thing I want to do in this case is it shows me the entire date as of now, but I don't want to see the entire date. I already know what month it is because it's here, uh, highlighted here in this cell. So what I want is only the day value, which is 01 or 02. So to do that, I'm going to select this entire grid. Then I'm going to go to the home tab and here in the number group, I'm going to click on this small dialog box launcher. And when I do that, it opens the format cells dialog box. You can also get the same thing if you use the keyboard shortcut control one. So hold the control key and press the one key. Or if you're using Mac, then command one. Now in this format cells dialog box, I would select the numbers tab and here click on custom. And when I click on custom, it shows me the current format of these cells, which is DDMMYY. Now the reason I also want to not show these dates and instead show uh, the day number only is because these dates could be confusing. I am recording this video in India and according to my settings, this is a date, then month and then year. So it is DDMMYYYY format. But if you are in the US, then you may think this to be 2nd January 2022. So there could be a confusion. So avoid that confusion. I'm going to remove everything and only have the day number. So I would hold the control key, press the one key. In the number group, I would go to custom and I'm going to remove everything and only have D, D in the formatting type field. And now when I click OK, everything is gone and only the day number remains. Let me reduce the column width. So I have the calendar, which looks more like what I showed you in the beginning. Now, the last thing that I want to do is, let me also adjust these column widths. Now, the last thing I want to do is, I want to highlight those holidays. But before that, let me also highlight the weekend dates. Now, in this case, I'm going to highlight Saturday and Sunday as the weekend days. But in case you only have Sunday as the day off, then you can only highlight Sunday. Or if you have, let's say Friday and Saturday as the weekend, then you can highlight those. In this case, I'm going to go with Saturday and Sunday. And now, finally, I need to highlight those days that are holidays. And I'm going to pick those dates from this holiday calendar. So to do that, I'm going to use a very simple conditional formatting formula. So I'm going to apply conditional formatting where there would be a formula and that formula is going to analyze each of these cells. It was it would check the value in the cell and see whether that value is there in the holiday sheet in this column B or not. If it is not there, nothing is going to happen. But if that value is there, then it is going to get highlighted. So the formula that I'm going to use is going to be a very simple VLOOKUP formula. So let me first show you the formula and then I'll apply it in conditional formatting. So the formula is going to be VLOOKUP where I'm going to look up this value. Now, also remember that Although I have formatted these cells to only show you the day number in the back end, it still contains the entire date. So I can easily compare it with the dates in the holidays sheet. So this is my lookup value. My lookup 
table array is this entire column. So I'm selecting the entire column. I can also select this range, but assuming you may add more dates to it, I'm going to select the entire column. So let me press F4 to lock this. Then uh, the column from which I want the value would be one because I'm just only selecting one column and then I want an exact match, so zero here. And now when I hit enter, it would either give me the date or give me not available, not available in case it cannot find that value in this column. But for me to use this formula in conditional formatting, I need to make sure that this formula returns either true or false. So if it is a true, the cell gets highlighted. If it is a false, the cell does not get highlighted. So I'm going to use the is number formula within the VLOOKUP formula. So if it gives me an error, this would return false, but it gives me a number which or a date, which is again a number, then this would return true. So let me copy this and I can delete this here. I would select this entire grid. I would go to the home tab and here in conditional formatting, I would go to new rule. And here I'm going to click on this option, which is use a formula to determine which cells to format. And here I'm going to use the formula. Now, again, very important is that this formula should only return a true or a false. If it returns anything else, then the conditional formatting is not going to work. In our formula, in our case, that's the case. It is either going to return a true or a false. Now I'm going to specify the format. So I would click on this format button. Then I would go to fill and maybe let's choose red color and let's choose a white font, maybe make it bold. And now when I click OK and I click OK here, you can see that this cell has gotten highlighted. Now we can check in the holidays calendar. We can see that February 2021 is a holiday. So this gets highlighted. And again, this is dynamic. So if I change the month value here and make this January, then all the holidays in January get highlighted. Again, you can come back and check here. These two dates, 1st January and 17th January are the dates that are getting highlighted. So now we have created the final dynamic monthly calendar, but there is one more thing I want to show you. To make this video easier for you to follow, I created these two formulas here, got these values, and then used these values in the main formula here. But you can see this formula refers to this cell. So there is no need for me to keep these values. Instead, I can simply use the formula that is used in this cell and replace this reference, so reference for N4 with the formula in the cell. So let me quickly do that. I'm going to copy this formula and replace all the references to cell N4. So I would come here and wherever I see N4, I'm going to replace it with this. Let me actually make the changes in the formula bar because that is easier for me to follow. So I'm going to check and where the, wherever there is an N4, I'm going to replace it with this formula. So now when I hit enter, it gives me the right result. I also have N4 here in this cell. So I'm going to replace it here as well. Now, if I come here and I delete this, my calendar would still work. Similarly, I would come here copy this entire thing and wherever I have a reference to cell N5, I am going to replace it with the formula. So let me again go back to the formula bar and see wherever I have N5. So I can see it's here and it's here. So now I can come here, I can remove this and I have my monthly calendar. And you can see it looks like a huge formula, although the logic is quite simple. And when I broke it down, it made all sense. But instead of showing you this entire big formula, I broke it down so that it will be easier for you to follow. So now we have this monthly calendar. You can come here, you can change the year value, you can change the month value, and this would automatically update. And at the same time, it would also highlight these dates. These are holidays, but these could be any important date. You can just add these dates here in the holidays sheet and those would be highlighted in the calendar. So this is how you can create this dynamic monthly calendar in Excel. I would also create another video maybe sometime next week or in the next few weeks to show you how to create a similar dynamic yearly calendar in Excel. That's it in this video. I hope you found this useful. Also, if you're liking these videos, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and click on the bell icon so that you never miss out on any new Excel tips video I come up with. Thank you and have a nice day.